Resident Evil 4 was my introduction to the whole Resident Evil series. This game holds a special place in my heart as a game that got me into the whole survival horror type game back in 2005. I was a 12 year old kid with one of my most favorite and underrated consoles, the Nintendo GameCube. When I booted this thing up, didn't really realize just how important this game was for just gaming as a whole. Anyone Capcom home? continues their streak of amazing remakes with Resident Evil 4, just as expected. I just really didn't expect to be even more wowed here with this one at all. Before I get started, consider dropping a subscriber like. We're a new and growing channel that just hit 87 subscribers. I focus on reviews and I've been gaming since the 90s. I work full time and my goal is to help guide you all into what games are worth your cash and what games are worth skipping and waiting for a sale. It's been about 18 years since I had last played this game, so I almost feel like I was playing something completely new. I recognized some of the set pieces, but the game rarely felt redundant or boring as I constantly found myself discovering and just appreciating what the game did. To expand on what I mean earlier about what this did for gaming, most third person over the shoulder games wouldn't really exist without Resident Evil 4. This game took survival horror and it masterfully blended action, puzzles, and discovery with an environment that's really just mimicked to this day. The original game being a lot clunkier than this and a lot lighter I think in tone is just taken to the next level with this remake. Back when this originally came out, some didn't like it because it wasn't just pure horror like the games before it, and it was just a lot more action packed, which I totally understand. The success though of this game leads to the really bad Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6 that turned us into these commando soldiers versus the zombies. I wanted to start with the story, which explains how Leon got here. Leon, who is the main character and who you play as, is tasked with finding Ashley, who is the president's daughter. She's been abducted by a cult. I'm not sure why the president wouldn't send the entire army in this situation, but Leon is basically the John Wick of the Resident Evil series. So he's probably just a lot cheaper than an entire army. You get to the village and you discover that this cult is really, really off, worshipping this infection worm thing called Las Plagas. This turns all of these farmer village cultist guys into just bloodthirsty, psychotic, infected, who can take a lot of damage. Your mission basically leads you to discover what happened to the village, you meet some old friends, you make some new friends, and you're fighting tooth and nail to survive every encounter. The game starts off super strong and it just never lets off the gas pedal constantly taking you from creepy environment to the next and always keeping up the tension when it comes to your ammo and your healing. The story is a little unrealistic, yeah, but the environmental storytelling, the notes that you're finding, and just how badass the cutscenes are, just keep you invested in what's happening and just keeps you excited to learn something new in every location. They've changed a lot of things up from the original like removing some of those quick time events, especially during the knife fight boss battle that you have and it gives you full on control. What Capcom has done with this remake is improve on a game that if they honestly just re-released with just shinier graphics, people would be rightfully pretty pissed by it. You're immediately gonna notice just how good the graphics are by the way. I had to play most of the game on my OLED and really enjoy it. I opted for performance mode on the Series X and I highly suggest you do the same. It's very easy to get overrun by how many enemies they throw at you and you'll want the game to be just snappy, especially with how weird the villagers movement is. They're constantly dodging. Yeah, I mean, they're not, they don't even I think understand that they're dodging, but their weird movements just make it really hard to line up headshots at times. The game is just a lot more darker than what I remember. I mean, the cult seems a lot more evil and satanic. What I love here is that the game has just been reimagined and that's to really add a little bit of fear to a game that becomes a lot more action packed as you go on. The environments and graphics are just so good. And I mean, the game does its best to put you in this creepy village that's overrun with cultists. You've got amazing set pieces like a castle, there's a mine car sequence. I mean, you fight two trolls at the same time, and of course the crazy chainsaw guys that are after you. Mm -hmm. 
there's stuff that I don't even remember playing through, like the blind Wolverine armored people and the whole Ashley sequence that looks like, I mean, it just felt a lot less frustrating than the one that I remember from the original. Again, I just want to mention, I don't remember a lot of the details from the original, so it's really hard for me to point out exact things that have changed, but I can tell some things have gotten a lot better. Besides the graphics, the controls have changed for the better. Resident Evil 4, the original, was more fluid than the other Resident Evil games, but the tanky gameplay, I mean, definitely wouldn't have worked in 2023. You can move while shooting now, and Leon is just a lot more easier to control. They added this new thing called a parry with a knife that definitely wasn't in the original, which really helps when the villagers are throwing things and trying to attack you. Speaking of the knife, they did nerf it, and now it can break, so you're going to want to use it sparingly. You can use it to finish off your enemies and get them off you when they grab you. Leon does seem to kick just a lot more, and I'll admit, it kind of got old, but it's a really good way to make space when you get overrun by villagers, which starts to happen a lot. They did add some stealth, but I mean, I failed at that as usual, and besides killing one person, that's all I could really do before the entire town was alerted to my presence. I noticed that they added these new side missions too, that'll reward you with spinal things that you could trade to the always awesome and iconic stranger for some treasure and enhancements. I mean, I definitely remember the stranger, he's back, he's got a new voice actor, and he's here to sell you an entire arsenal so you can solo the whole village. I like that you could upgrade your guns and sell them, and that way you get all of your money back versus kind of missing out on money when you do make these upgrades. So this basically let me try out all of the weapons. I had no fear of going broke. I always did feel just a little broke though, because I mean, I couldn't afford to max out all of my guns. Even when I found most of the treasures and placed all the gems. I mean, I think they did this for replayability though, because you do get a new game plus and there are harder modes for a game that I thought was actually pretty hard. I mean, I personally found myself dying a lot during some of those areas, especially early on. Besides new modes, you do get unlockable outfits, a new free update that's coming called Mercenaries, which is a survival mode, and a DLC that focuses on Ada Wong. Games back in the day came with all of these unlockables for free. Go figure. Ada Wong also has a new voice actress this time around. I can't really tell if it was her or her recording, but just something felt off when you meet her, especially in comparison to the old actress. I don't think it's necessarily bad, it's just not as good as the original. And, you know, just to put this out of the way, people are being pieces of shit and they're bullying the actress over a side character's voice, which, come on, is it's a super shitty thing to do. Don't do that. It makes us all look bad and nothing in life is that serious, especially when the game this good is out. I mean, her voice is the least of my worries. So did I have any issues playing this game? No, I mean, the game ran for me without any performance issues or bugs. I look forward to playing this every day, and when it comes to gameplay and fun, I think the game nails it. You're always looking for more bullets, you're looking for money for upgrades and healing items, the game doesn't let up on the amount of enemies that they throw at you, and that's what keeps the tension going. It's not a jump scare kind of game, but it's able to master action and horror with its environment, the puzzles, and item scarcity, unlike the really shitty Callisto Protocol that I played. After playing this game again, I can see what they tried to do with Resident Evil Village, and as much as I like that game, it's seriously nothing in comparison to Resident Evil 4, which to me is just a complete masterpiece when it comes to horror. The game is seriously a blast, and I think it does everything right. It's not short at all, you've got 16 chapters that take around about 20 hours to beat, and I mean the reason this one took so long for me to review is because I only get a couple hours to game a day after work. The game was also $60 not the new $70 standard, it's getting a free mercenary update mode, and if you're considering buying it, stop waiting, do yourself a favor and buy the game. If I had to score it, the game is a 10 out of 10, continuing Capcom's streak of amazing remakes. This one for me is possibly the best remake I've ever played, especially since most companies are just touching up graphics and just selling us the game again for full price. Here, not only are the graphics better, the gameplay is modernized, the controls are fluid, the environments are more tense, there's less cutscene events, every single aspect of this game shines, and the only thing that I laughed at is when Leon used his knife to stop a chainsaw. But that's just so minor in a game that does seriously just everything right. I'm so happy I got to experience this one again, and I urge everyone to drop $60 on this and experience it. 
Don't bother with the original because this one is just a complete upgrade from the original. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. We hit 87 subscribers and I'm just stoked that 87 people want to hear me nerd out about video games. Drop a like, hit subscribe if you enjoyed the video, help us take on this YouTube algorithm. And let me know in the comments, if you played the original, are you planning on getting this one? 2023 is seriously off to a great start and I'm excited for upcoming games to come out. I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.